Artists are often known for having these huge personalities and are accused of being, well, a bit of a character. There's no way they're actually like that in real life. It must be an act. Hey guys, it's Karen. Welcome back to Little Art Talks. For today's five artists in five minutes, we're talking about just that, artists who dress up in the name of art. We've got to start off with the artist perhaps best known for her self-portraits in which she dresses up in a variety of costumes. And of course, I'm talking about the photographer-director, Cindy Sherman. She shoots alone in her studio, assuming multiple roles as the author, director, makeup artist, hairstylist, wardrobe mistress and model. Often working in series, she explores a wide range of common female social roles or personas. In untitled film stills, she constructs 69 photographs of herself enacting female cliches of the 20th century pop culture. She's also made series dressed as women from history paintings, fashion, and pornography. Morphing herself with makeup, prosthetics, and digital technology, she creates and portrays the multiple identities that reflect our image-saturated culture. Tammy Bentor is an Israeli visual artist known for inventing characters and playing them herself. At once performance, photography, and video, she confronts political issues, cultural cliches, and racial stereotypes with the absurdity and humor of her outlandish caricatures. In Women Talk About Adolf Hitler, various characters, all played by the artist, voice their thoughts on the Nazi dictator. The result is a bizarre and disturbing montage that covers a broad range of demographics, age groups, and cultures, satirically poking holes in prejudice while indicating how widespread and pervasive stereotyping is. Jillian Waring is an English conceptual artist who did a series of self-portraits of herself and family members called Album. In them, she wears carefully crafted masks and bodysuits in their likeness of her mother, father, brother, sister, uncle, and herself at different ages. Both unnerving and unnatural, these images are both self-portraits and a homage, where she is both anonymous and overly present. In self-portrait as my brother Richard Waring, she wears a bodysuit and a mask, appearing as a young man standing shirtless in a disordered room. The image is both unflattering and intimate. The mask, with its mouth closed and suit fixed in position, wearing was momentarily, literally trapped in her brother's body. Samuel Faso is a Cameroonian photographer who often takes self-portraits while adopting a series of personas. Working as a commercial photographer, he took self-portraits to use up unfinished roles that needed to be developed for urgent jobs. He would pose in front of a black backdrop with props on hand, but later they would become more elaborate, described as carefully staged, ironic self-performances. In his African Spirits series of 2008, he dressed up and posed as historical figures such as Malcolm X and Angela Davis. In The Chief Who Sold Africa to the Colonialists, he poses sitting on a western-style chair with a leopard skin cover holding a bouquet of sunflowers, a symbol of African medicine, and wearing a fashionable pair of white glasses whose thin frame recalls traditional African masks. Also explained in an interview, people think I'm Mobutu, but the image actually stands for all African chiefs that have sold their continent to the white men. Nikki S. Lee is a Korean photographer and filmmaker, formerly based in New York City but now living and working in Seoul. She worked on projects from 1997 to 2001 where she photographed herself posed with people of various subcultures, including drag queens, punks, swing dancers, senior citizens, Latinos, hip-hop musicians and fans, skateboarders, lesbians, young urban professionals, and Korean schoolgirls. She immerses herself into each American subculture and created an identity that is an extension of herself. Lee says that her work is less about creating beautiful pictures and more about investigating notions of identity and the uses of vernacular photography. Rather than dressing up and performing as a character, 
Lee believes that individual identity is fluid and that her projects were extensions of herself. That's it for this week's 5 and 5. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And a side note, I think I'm going to be putting these 5 and 5s on a little bit of a break for a bunch of videos that I want to do in February as a special February thing. You guys might remember last year I did a video about the love story of Cupid and Psyche for Valentine's Day, and I thought that February would be the perfect month to share some of my favorite love stories, and of course sharing the artwork that has been made to portray their epic love stories. So if there's no 5 and 5, it's because I was too busy making those videos, but I'm really hoping to get a couple of them up for February. Keep your eyes peeled for them, subscribe so that you get a notification. Sometimes it's kind of tricky, like you don't get notifications. If you've been having trouble following videos, the best way is probably following one of the social medias. I always post the videos onto Twitter, I post them onto Tumblr, post them on Patreon, and so forth. In addition, if you didn't know, if there's a channel that you really want to be notified when they upload, you can actually go to their channel page next to the subscribe button when you're subscribed there's a little wheel for settings so if you click on that it'll take you to a little pop-up it'll have a little check off box for send me notifications via email so anytime that they upload they will email you directly I know it's kind of annoying because subscription box is supposed to show you everything but they don't so if you want to make sure that you get all the videos be sure to do that and that's a little tip for you if you want to do that for any of the other channels you follow because I know what it feels like when your favorite channel doesn't show up and you have to go look for it yourself, right? Anyways, I hope you guys have a great Sunday or whatever day you're watching this on and I'll see you guys next time.